When we had last left Harrier Dubois, he and Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi proceeded into the hidden caverns, the hidden trenches beneath the felled electrical building. It was where they suspected Ruby was making a holdout, hiding from whatever awaited her. As it turned out, they stepped directly into Ruby's trap. Yes, some sort of terrible science fiction death ray, destroying their brains in the process, overloading them with information. It was hard to say exactly what was going on, but it was incredibly painful. Despite the pain, they continued on speaking with Ruby. She spilled her guts out with regards to the hanged man, the situation with Clausia, and many of the goings-on in Martinez. However, at the end of their conversation, she saw only one route left to take. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Let's look around. Good lord. Let's see, what's our journal update? Look for Ruby on the coast. Ruby's gone. Go to her tent. Good god. Fuck me. Hey look! Our hat came back. What the hell happened? It must have been some kind of weird bug. Huh. Weird. Okay. Let's unequip our gun. It's not needed. Alright. Jesus Christ. Can we interact with the machine? It looks like the machine repaired itself or something? I wonder if that would have gone differently if we decide not to try and break it, right? Gosh. It's so wild, like... We know for a fact that there's a shitload of different permutations of possibility in this game, like... A completely, like, wild amount. That sometimes I wonder, like, just how far does it even go? Like, sometimes I start wondering just, like... How deep do these permutations go? Like, could could we have, like, resolved this without passing that check? The rhetoric check? In some weird way? I have no idea. It's, it's kind of incredible to even think about, right? It makes it feel like each playthrough is really, like, super... It feels super unique, right? Even, even if it turns out to not be the case, it extremely feels that way, right? Probably more so than any other game I've ever played in my life, honestly. All right. Let's click on this. Dark water trails into the distance. There's no way out. Good lord. There's our tent. Can we actually, like, rummage around inside? Yeah. Okay. What's this thing? Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. Bananas? Where would she get bananas from? Maybe from one of her halls? I don't know. Drowamine. Plus three health. Eight money. Okay. Over here. Instigator's tent. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It does claim that she's an instigator, right? It, her title was Ruby the Instigator. But I don't know if I... Like, I feel like I believe her story, right? A lot of it doesn't make sense. Like, like we said back with Clausia, the whole reason why we took Clausia in was because part of... Like, it just didn't make sense and she was like a flight risk and all that, right? One of our three reasons. With the noise... But the real question is, if it wasn't Ruby, and obviously not Clausia, who shot Lely, who did and why? Maybe we don't even know who did it, right? Maybe we haven't even met that person yet. It couldn't have been any of the Hardy Boys. I seriously doubt, after speaking with a scab leader, that they, like, rigged the whole situation themselves, right? Unless that there was also an act. Right? But they seem like, for as fucked up as they are, they seem staunchly loyal to one another. Right? Huh. Part of me really wants it to be my wild ass theory of the bullet coming through the pail, but the, the sizing just doesn't... 
work, right? Because the bullet is slightly too big to fit through. I have no idea. What if it was the crab man? Why would the crab man give a shit, though? I don't know. And the real question is, what if... Right? Just, just like collecting our thoughts on the case right now. Could Clausia have been in cahoots with the killer, right? Because if the mercenaries were there on behalf of actually reinforcing the will of Wild Pines, and Clausia was there on behalf of refuting that, right? Or, like, screwing all that up. Did she intentionally, like, seduce Lely and try to take him out? I don't know. Hmm. And it seems like the... Like, throughout the whole dialogue with Ruby and stuff, a lot of it was pointing to, like, yeah, Martinez lost the trust of an important defender or something, right? And to the last moment, I almost feel like that's exactly what Ruby was doing, right? Like, was... Did Ruby kill herself not out of fear of being arrested or whatever, but out of fear of what may happen if there wasn't someone to take, like, the hit, right? That she there needed to be a scapegoat, so she was re willing to kill herself and was also in, like, already in a bad enough state, but kill herself to be that scapegoat, right? And like I said, she was already, like, not in a great mental state as was evidenced by the floorboard situation. God, and what will the Hardy Boys think of this? Will they believe me? Oh. There's just so much up in the air. I feel like we're we're so close, right? But we, we're just missing, like, a few little extra things to fully understand what the hell is going on, right? Which, you know, that's kind of what you want, right? Out of this kind of a, a detective tale. All right. The plain red tent. Tent. Stands by, dispassionately. Look inside. You see a rolled up sleeping bag and personal belongings. We should put her in the sleeping bag so the rats don't get to her. Okay, let's carry her over here. The lieutenant nods. Jesus. Gosh, and how would the rest of this go if she lived? Like, how much more game is remaining? Does this end on at, like, the end of day seven? Is this, like, a week-long affair? Instigator's tent. There she lies, cocooned in the sleeping bag, in the sleeping bag, surrounded by empty cigarette packs, books, and half-read magazines. Oh. Shine your flashlight on the books and magazines. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. The lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. See anything? Sift through the magazines. Regia, Rega, Monthly, Journal of Material Science, More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. A notebook. Take it. You pocket the worn leather, worn brown leather journal. Item gained Ruby's journal. Ooh. Inland Empire, easy success. She watches by. Motionless. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. Okay. What's our little update here? Now we've got some junk here. Okay. Let's take a quick look then. Here it is. Ruby's journal. A well-loved journal with brown, with a brown leather cover, and the brand name Schneller, embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. Interact. A thick journal. 
The cover is worn, like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. See, I don't know about you, but I never have anything in my back pocket, unless I know I'm going to be walking around forever. If I know I'm like going to be sitting within like half an hour or something, I can't be sitting on something in my back pocket, especially my phone or like a wallet. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Empathy. Easy success. This was important to her, when it was still hers. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Interfacing medium success, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. Jackpot. We could learn a lot from this. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Oh shit, I wonder if we could bring this to Suna. Like, what kind of code are we talking? Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Volition, easy success. Professionalism is his coping mechanism, right? What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places... Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appear to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff. Oh, authority. Easy success. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Whoa. What did she write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well... That's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except... But that's another matter entirely. Huh. So she really... Her story, right, of her really helping out... Clausia kind of... Sight un unseen... Seems like it's checking out? Logic challenging failure. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Anything about Laputa Madre? The name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. No mention of Laputa Madre. What about this M? He points to the page you're staring at. Could this be Laputa Madre? Here, March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from March 9th first. What if I really did kill him? I have a motive, don't I? What if I killed Lely? Huh. What if I was working with Clausia to kill Lely? No. Did, did I do it? No. 
that was just for fun, the wild ass thing with the lieutenant, right? I mean, I do have motive, and I don't know my whereabouts, right? I guess the question is, how early was I on the scene in Martinez? But how could that be? Unless I was already on the scene when I was asked by the precinct to be here. Right, but wouldn't they find that suspicious? Yeah, I don't think so. Right? That's too fucking wild. Anyway, Ruby's journal. Great. M's peon is coming to town. No doubt to investigate the lynching, but also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my own head. While I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Inland Empire easy success. Things played out just as she had feared. Except you didn't shoot her. Half-Light easy success. It's in you to do something like this. Kill her. Physically, at least. You could pull the trigger if you had to. No, I couldn't. What a coincidence. I'm okay with the idea. I couldn't have pulled the trigger on her. Maybe... Maybe before, but not now. I couldn't. Yes, you could. You'd pull it one, two, three times and watch her fall. Empathy. Easy success. No. Stop. He wouldn't do that. Ooh, I like that, that they're at odds. Right? And these were both things that I was interested in, right? Half-Light, because some of it seemed so scary. Remember at the beginning when we were investing early game points and all that? Ooh. Okay, that's the shit I want. Read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the, to believe in the best in people. The boys, for example. But experience tells me... Did M tr feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. 5 XP. The entry ends abruptly. What the fuck? What's the most recent entry? Or look at the cover again? Yeah, looking at the cover isn't concluding it. Huh. Okay. The thick journal bound in brown leather is full of candor and diagrams. Flip through the pages again. Okay. What's the most recent entry? Conclude with journal. The most recent entry is from today. It reads... Task complete. Look for Ruby on the coast. 70 XP. Level up. Even when I leave here. If I leave here alive. What's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime. Even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run? Not really my idea of the open road. Man. I was really looking forward to winning. I... Don't think she killed the mercenary. The lieutenant taps on the page. It looks like she might have been framed. Yeah, that's that's what I've been going with as well, right? Like, since we even spoke to her. But... By who? Clausia? For what reason? Hmm. Continue. Esprit de corps, easy success. 
This whole thing was a detour, and a fatal one, he thinks. Volition, easy success. Don't get emotional. So, she died for nothing. She killed the merc, then turned the gun on herself. Case closed. So tidy. Okay, what do you mean, framed? So she died for nothing. She was in plenty of trouble, even without the murder charge. He looks down. Still, it's a nasty business. Kim, am I really a Laputa Madre agent? New task. Are you Laputa Madre's peon? He looks you straight in the eye for a moment, then sighs. No, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. Oh, fuck. What if one of them are? And that's why they showed up on the scene? What if, like, what's his name? Vic Mare is. Or the horse face woman, Judy. Huh. But what if I am? What if the lieutenant just trusts me too much and he couldn't see it in me? Right? Like, would he have a different take right here if we'd been shitty to him the whole way through? Huh. Continue. Oh. Volition, medium success. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. Huh. Am I wrong to put so much trust in Volition, right? Because Volition helped me with Clausia. Volition seems to always, like, have my back in the worst of times. But maybe it's a mistake to always be trusting Volition? I don't know. Because isn't Volition, like, the personification of, like, self-preservation or whatever? Yeah, hold yourself together, keep your morale up. I don't know. But I kind of like that I don't know, you know? Then who do you think killed the Merc? Conclude. Clausia was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself. Or... He stops to think. Seems plausible. I don't know. But no one heard the shot. Yeah, that's the fucking... That's the... <laughs> that's the killer of the theory, right? That's the wrench in our gears. No one fucking heard the shot. It couldn't have been Clausi. Maybe Clausi was working with someone else, right? Which, sure, great. We figured out that maybe, potentially, Clausi really was, like, shitty. But there's still, like... Like a gunman out there. But no one heard the shot. Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way... We should go back to the Whirling, see if we can find out more about her time there. New task, return to the Whirling in rags. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the Whirling in rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Half-Light, formidable success. Something tells you you should be extra careful from now on. What the fuck? How ominous. How fucking foreboding. Alright. The plain red tent rests stoically in the corner. Ruby's dead body is wrapped in her sleeping bag. Jesus. Oh, I love that having the light out produces these eerie shadows from all the poles, right? Let's do a quick save, because honestly, that half-light pass check or whatever... ...creeped me the fuck out. <laughs> what is this as well? Is this part of the machine? These, like... ...metal plates? Are these plates of metal? I don't know. It's like this is some kind of funnel or whatever. Was it, like, firing into this, like, it looks almost like a airplane turbine or whatever, and then ricocheting back out? 
Is that what that was? I have no idea. God, are we gonna run into something else down here? How fucking scary. Alright. Ooh. Horrific necktie. Breton! Now is the time! Time for what? Go away, necktie. You're just a figment of my imagination. Time for what? Oh, you will see. It feels like the tie is rubbing itself against your chest, like a cat in heat. First, the spirits. The blue medicinal spirits. Grab the bottle and uncork it. It's time to unleash the other world. Wait, right now? A woman just died and you think now is a good time to party? Slowly uncork the blue medicinal spirit. You know what? I'm done with this crazy talking necktie bullshit. Wait, right now? A woman just died. Breton, life and death are inseparable. There's a party when you're born. A party every year to celebrate that birth. And a party when you're put in the ground. Electrochemistry, easy success. Yeah, what's the problem here? Why shouldn't there be a party when you die? And beside, this isn't even about that. You have no idea what this is about. This is gonna be so off the hook. It's gonna be off all the hooks. Well, we may as well do it. We went through the trouble of finding it and keeping it all this time. Fuck it. We just quicksaved. Worst case, if something absolutely horrific happens. Let's go. Slowly uncork the blue medicinal spirit. The bottle opens with a silent, mysterious hiss. The fumes rising from its mouth are as crisp as the northern winds. Shivers. Easy success. Howling. Somewhere. Lashing the boardwalk with brine and rain. An ancient warmth crawls under your skin. Now, Breton, take me off. What? I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> take the necktie off. Now, we've taken the necktie off before. Take the necktie off. Your fingers manage to undo the oily knot, and the necktie slides off. It looks so frail sitting there in your hand, weighing almost nothing. Now what? Now, put me in the bottle. But why? Put the necktie in the bottle. Be gone, foul necktie. Finally, I rid myself of you. End it. Throw the necktie as far as you can. What? Is it going to, like, react in some way with the liquid? But why? Trust me. Just trust me. You and I are going to have so much fun. It should be illegal. I suspect that it might be. Just put me in the bottle, Breton. I'm not going to let you down. You and I are like the same person. Put the necktie tie in the bottle. As the necktie slides into the purifying liquid, large stains of grease rise off from it and flow to the surface. There, they quickly dissolve and disappear completely. Cleansed by the blue spirit fire of 98.7% pure alcohol. The fabric looks almost new again. No longer like a disgusting worm of the lower intestine. But like a colorful and deadly poisonous reef snake of the Insulindian Ocean. So, what next? 
the necktie floats in the bluish liquid with almost unearthly grace. Necktie? There is silence. Cork the bottle and put it away. Huh. Item lost, blue medicinal spirit. Item gained, spirit bomb. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. Have we made like an ultra potent, like, Molotov cocktail? Empathy. Easy success. He's struggling to keep silent, but finally seems to give up. I've got to ask. He says a, pecu he says a peculiar look in his eyes. What are you doing? I don't really know, but I'm eager to find out. In my family, when someone dies, you put a piece of clothing in a bottle as a sign of eternal respect. Okay, Kim. I didn't want to tell anyone, but my necktie has been talking to me lately. Mind your own business, Binoclard! <laughs> I'm down for one or three here. I don't know if I'm eager to find out or we come clean about the necktie talking. Though I want to say we told him at some point, but he brushed it off. I'm not sure. Maybe it was some other weird thing we were doing. I didn't want to tell anyone, but my necktie has been talking to me lately. Of course it has. He doesn't even look too surprised. It started when I woke up in the whirling in rags. It's been talking to me ever since. Forget it. You're not open-minded enough to understand anyway. No, it started when I woke up. And what has the necktie been telling you, if I may ask? It mostly urges me to party harder. It teaches me about life, Kim. Sort of a father figure. We're buds, mostly just goofing around. Signs of some really hardcore mental illness, Kim. Point to your head. It mostly urges me to party harder. Wonderful. Very useful. Rhetoric medium success. He doesn't actually believe it's wonderful. Okay. So why did you put it in the bottle? Why not, Lieutenant? Because it told me to. I simply don't know. Because it told me to. 5 XP. Right. Okay. Anyway... I'm glad you told me your necktie has been speaking to you. That must not have been easy. For a second, it looks like he's about to add something. Esprit de corps, easy success. We're all under stress. This is turning into a great big mess. I'm not judging. Just keep it together. But then he turns away. His gaze fixed on the road ahead. Let's go, he concludes. It's a tool. Spirit bomb. Equip this when times are most dire. Is this some Dragon Ball Z shit as well? Because isn't that... Isn't that what a spirit bomb is in there? you get the energy from everybody or whatever and then it's when times are most dire Goku or whoever uses a spirit bomb or something your spirit guide to the party scene the most horrific necktie is floating serenely in the blue medicinal spirit as it is as it is still 98.7% alcohol this necktie cocktail is extremely flammable and should be kept far away from an open flame. Do we have anything that we could use to produce a flame, though? Hmm. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, that's also the description on our gun. Equip this when times are most dire. Huh. Okay. Are times most dire right now? A little scary but <laughs> sure let's put on our bow tie i guess i feel naked without the horrific necktie 
No, let's put on, yeah, our gift. There we go, our bolo. Okay. What the fuck? Is something going to happen when we leave this? Are we going to like have to use a weapon? Our time's most- should I equip shit right now? <laughs> uh, should I come out of this like fully armed? Should I like be ready to fucking go? <laughs> I'm dual wielding now. I don't know, I'm kinda psyched out now, I'm a little scared. I'm ready. Should I heal up and shit? I'm fucking scared. <laughs> uh, let's heal up a little bit. I'm feeling fucking uneasy traveling through this spooky little area. God. I don't even have bullets for my fucking gun. But who needs fucking bullets when I have a power bomb? Alright. What would have- how would have this have gone if Clausia didn't get arrested, right? Would she have run off by now? Or what? Hmm. Part of me was tempted to exit from the rooftop. Something has changed. Look, they're not there anymore. Something happened. Oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> Why am I so slow, like, on edge right now? Is it because I drank some coffee before recording? Oh dear lord. I'm like RP walking and everything. What's our current quest? Are Lu are you Laputa Madre's peon? Spirit is eternal. Be ready, Breton. I'm ready. Gosh, should I never unequip this? <laughs> now that this is ready? <laughs> now that it's time? Good lord, what the fuck? Okay. Okay, the kids are here. Sure. Yeah, everything's normal. Everything's fine. Okay. Because I guess what also has got me on edge is that when we were going in there, we had all of that shit telling us, like, yeah, this is a sort of point of no return. Shit will not be the same after this. So part of me is waiting for, like, the shoe to drop. Good lord. Part of me is afraid I'm just gonna get fucking sniped. Right? Like, we're gonna hear a gunshot from whoever's in the fucking apartment. Trying to, like, blast us. Got an orb. Inland Empire. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend, your weapon. It is glowing in your hand, ready to serve. Composure, easy success. Raindrops slip down the oily fabric of the tail end of your necktie turned fuse. Kim, there's danger up ahead. Yes, I hear commotion. He cups his ear. Let's go. I'm scared. This isn't the time for fear. Go. What the fuck is about to happen? Oh my god! <laughs> You know what? We're gonna call this one a little short because it feels like we're around the precipice of another enormous fucking wild thing happening and I don't know what, but we now have a bomb ready to use for whatever's about to happen. Oh my god. Alright. When next we come back, we might have to 
fucking throw a Molotov, a like super Molotov at someone or whatever. Or something? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little fucking on edge. Probably when next we come back, I'm gonna have some of the armor equipped and be fully he healed up as well. I feel like that's probably a good thing to uh, have accomplished. All right. Until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>